Alex, this is my vlog of observations about your antithetical speeches. <clears throat> For the first speech, I thought it had a really great build-up. I didn't know exactly what you were talking about at first or where you were going with it, and I wanted to know which company you were or industry you were talking about the entire time you were building it up. So I thought that was really cool because it made me want to know. It made me get into your speech, and I thought that was a really good technique to do. And I believe you've done that in the past before, and in the last speech that I had to watch of yours, so I think that's a strong suit of yours. <clears throat> you definitely had some great research done. I could tell that you were very into it, that you did a lot of research, and that the sites that you found backed up your beliefs in it. And that's always a good strong suit to have when discussing a topic. You had some really great examples in it. Uh, you definitely had a fervor for it, a great passion. I could tell you were definitely into what you were talking about, <clears throat> and you had really good eye contact and vocal variety. For the second speech, you just dove right into it rather than building up to it, and that was different, but it also, it that's not necessarily a bad thing. It was just a different approach. It kind of threw me off a, a minute because I wasn't sure if you were going to do the same thing or not. Uh, you also did some really good research on the second speech, and that's really great because that proves you looked really hard into both sides of the argument to find good sources to back up what you were saying. Uh, you used, for, like the, for example, you used the amendments, and that was a pretty good idea, talking about freedom and stuff like that. Uh, so you had <coughs> sorry, some really good examples, and you made it sound really believable. Considering that I know you as a person, I know that you more believe in the first speech than the second. But the fact that you could make the second speech sound so believable is really good in arguing your case. Because if you were giving these speeches to people who didn't know you, they wouldn't exactly know on which side you stood based off of just your speeches. And that's really awesome because I think that's the whole point of why we're doing these speeches. So really good job on that. And in the second speech, you also had good eye contact and vocal variety as well. Um, <clears throat> one of the examples that came to my mind in the second speech when you were talking about drug, drug addictions and you know taking that away, it made me think of caffeine. How would the world react if, or more so America, but how would we react if all pop was taken away from us? Or fast food, for instance. We would go insane. We'd go crazy because we've become so dependent on it and we'd miss it so much. And I think that's something that porn does as well to everybody. Is It, we, it makes us crave it and need it. And <clears throat> so that was that's a good example with the drugs. Um, for the first speech, what I was thinking was perhaps, since I, I personally know that that's what you truly believe in, is maybe use scripture as an example. Bring God into it. What does God have to say about it? And judging by what he says, why don't we listen to him when it comes to that? Or why should we listen to him but don't? Stuff like that, maybe. Um... Also, what I think you could have done was perhaps look up some stories, some personal stories of people, how porn has affected them personally, how it's ruined their lives, and stuff like that, uh, for the first speech. Not so much the second one, that would kind of defeat the purpose. Um, but I think if you add in some personal stories, that makes it more personal for the crowd. Uh, so... Those are just some ideas. Overall, you did a fantastic job. I really enjoyed listening to your speeches, and you did some really good research, man. Keep it up.